So I'm back, um, finishing off my direct tax storage project, which was rudely interrupted by my workstation failing. So I had to fix that first, which is, um, so I've got the new system here. Um, so the motherboard, CPU and RAM had to be replaced. I kept the GPU, partly because I didn't really need an upgrade, but also because you can't get an upgrade even if you wanted one. So I now have an ASRock X570 motherboard with 64 gigabytes of RAM, which is important for me for developing my simulations and things like that. And then for the CPU, I went for a Ryzen 3700X. So that's a bit of a bit old, but it allowed me to save some money because in order to sort of be able to do this, I had to keep the cost pretty reasonable, really, because obviously. Um, works replaced this and there are things like COVID restrictions on spending as you'd expect but obviously I needed a system to do my work but it was an area where I could save some money and I don't need a super fast CPU for developing I can use the compute resources that are available which are much faster anyway and then so what else is in there is um, there's an M.2 drive for the boot drive and I put another M.2 drive in for home partition and then I'm using the old hard drives just as data backup and the old SSD I put a swap even though I probably won't really use that much but it gives me some swap space if I need it. And then the old GPU is still there, that's a, a 780 Ti I think, so that's pretty ancient. And then my Tesla card, which I do still use quite a lot uh, for developing. I've got Tesla, newer Tesla cards in the compute, you know, sort of, sort of supercomputer type systems. Uh, but this is useful for development. So it's an old K40. And then underneath, you can see the external SAS card. So one of the requirements I had on the motherboard, which did restrict things quite a lot actually, was the ability to put those three in. Um, when there's three in this board, I think the first two are restricted to eight times and the bottom one is restricted to four times PCIe, which is fine. Uh, that's not a problem, particularly as it's PCIe 4, which these, these devices aren't compatible with anyway, but um, in future that won't be a massive problem. Just notice there's a bit of tension on that USB 3 cable, so I'll sort that out. Um, it's, uh, don't really want that to kind of snap the connector off. But yeah, that's the system. I got a couple of fans, one in the top. I found a Noctua fan kicking around, put in the back there. And then there's some fans down there that cool the hard drives. So hopefully now I'll be back up and running. And underneath the desk, is the direct attached storage unit that I made and will now find out if it works. So hopefully it does. I'm going to plug everything in and see what I get. So I've booted the system up and please say it works, which is good. It's a good start. Um, all the hard drives are detected. I'll show you the, the actual uh, system in a second. Uh, I called it Vault, so it's at the bottom there. It's uh, a RAID 1 mirror, I thought I'd experiment with that first, which is when you have the same number of drives of all the same size, that's pretty similar to RAID 10 on BTRFS, which is what I'm using, but I decided to set it as RAID 1 for now, just um, I'm going to do some stability testing just to make sure it's uh, working properly before I actually put anything important on there, and there's a few of the drives there. Out a little bit. Uh, well, actually, that's all eight of them um, that have been added into that BTRFS array. Just to excuse the automatic window, which you can probably hear in the background. That's not very convenient, but um, they never are. This is just a quick update on the direct attached storage that I built last time. So you can see the two banks of four drives and then they're connected via uh, external SAS cables through a pass-through. The reason the, um, the case side, you can see the pass-through there and there's a couple of fans. The reason the uh, 
case side is off is that actually four drives weren't detected initially. And I just sort of filled around with them a bit and it might have been a loose cable or something, but that's part of the reason why I'm going to do this stability testing because I don't know if it's going to be 100% stable as it is or if there's maybe a dodgy cable or something in there. But it seems to be working fine, so um, pretty happy with it at the minute. Um, I'll do an update in maybe a few weeks after I've used it a bit and uh, let you know how stable it is. Um, it's not too noisy either, which is good. <laughs>